Hi, my name is Bill Bailey. I'm a hydronic specialist for about the last 35 years. And today we want to talk about air elimination. Why do we want air elimination? What's the reason for it? Basically, in a hydronic system, we don't want air in the system because a couple things. One, noise. Little bubbles racing around the system will impinge upon pieces of metal, your fin tube and everything else and make noise. That's very disturbing. Hydronic system should be super quiet. Two, those bubbles moving around of air, of oxygen, basically are corrosive. They will attack other metals and cause rust, magnetite, and the other products in the system that we don't want. So basically we want to get this water to be, what I like to call dead water. Basically it has nothing to do, it just floats around the system, transferring heat from our boiler to our terminal units day in and day out, being nice and comfortable. Talking about different forms of air elimination. The first and most basic one is basically an air vent. Okay, there's different sizes, different versions, different flavors. There's a smaller one I don't even have in my hand right now, it's called a coin air vent that you'll find on radiators and typically on baseboard at the top of a loop or something. Okay, those are basically manually operated. You take a coin or a key, open and close that vent to let the air out at that terminal device. Also, when you're doing piping systems, wherever you have a high point, you wanna make sure you have an air vent on top of it. That basically aids you in getting out that air that's in those high points so we can get circulation flowing in the system. Air vents are like this, small, it's fitting right down here, connects to the pipe with a cap on top of it. There's also more expensive versions, but they do have other features where basically you can take this air vent itself close it down while the system is still live and actually remove the guts of the system and clean it and put it back online without disturbing or having to shut off your system. But in any case, at every high point, every terminal unit, it's to your advantage to have some type of air vent, whether it be manual like the coin vents or automatic like these two to get that system up and running as fast as possible. The air scoop. Basically the air scoop it's an active form of air elimination, but basically it was a bulge in the pipe. What would happen is as I made a bulge in the pipe, water would come through with the air in it, air normally being on top, being more buoyant, would come to a much larger area and rise naturally. Naturally, we would rise up to an air vent, which we talked about earlier, and get eliminated from the system. It's a pretty crude piece of device, it had a little vein in there that sort of tried to coax the air up even faster and higher to get up to the air vent to get out of the system. It did what it did, it worked pretty well, but it's very, very crude and primitive. We have newer and better things that have been around for years that we'll talk about next. The second type of air elimination, active air elimination, is basically the roll air troll. And what the roll air tr troll do, basically think of it as a tub drain. It spun the water around the circle on the inside of the container and basically created a low pressure zone in the center. The air would go into that low pressure zone, liberate itself from the water and rise up to the air vent. The air vent would then eliminate it from the system once and for all. You don't see roll air trolls on smaller systems, residential, maybe a couple apartment buildings, but you'll see it on your bigger 12 flats and more like commercial, small schools, that kind of stuff. You have a lot more water volume flow, costs more money. You are talking about a bigger system, but they were there to do the same thing. It's basically create that vortex fashion to allow the air to liberate itself out of the water and up to the air vent and out of the system. The third form of active air elimination, which is called an air eliminator. Now it's active. What I mean by active, it's always following the water. Water's going through it around the system constantly. So it's constantly going past the air eliminator. In this application, we show there's my supply pipe right here. Comes into the air eliminator. It acts like a bulge, just like the old air scoop did. Allows the water to go through, grabs the air hopefully, out to the rest of the system. It keeps going round and round. So this thing's always always working for you, eliminating any bubbles or micro bubbles or whatever you want to call those little pieces of air that we want to get out. The cutaway of this unit, basically this, 
Here's my supply and return. I'm basing my supply going right through. Here's my element. This manufacturer uses this type of cage, which grabs the air bubbles that are attracted to it. They build up, they get high enough up that they raise this float or lower the float, depending on how this system works, the vent works, and basically gets rid of the air. Another version of this, maybe a little simpler to see, this unit. They both do the same thing. Again, my water comes through here. Here's my bulge in the system. Here's my air vent on top. In this case, this air vent is totally removable so you can clean it. Why would we want to clean this? Well, guess what happens sometimes? Somebody that's doing some soldering and likes to use a lot of flux, gets right up in here. So if you got your air eliminator, and you're just starting up the system, and you open this vent over here, or the cap, and you don't get anything out, I would isolate the system and remove all the excess flux. Flux out of here, okay? That will hurt the unit, okay? But it is totally cleanable, so you can do that. Inside this unit, they basically use a stainless steel brush. These wires attract the oxygen to it, Bubble builds up here, meets its buddy here. They get bigger and bigger and bigger. Finally, they get up here into the vent mechanism and they're out the system. Okay, so this is just another form of that. These come in sizes all the way from three quarter inch up to eight and 10 inches in size. So they're all different sizes based on the system and the GPM flow rate that you're gonna to try to move through that system. There are two types of air elimination. One is the first line of vents is our air vents. Remember, we use those on our high points, our terminal units, our radiators, wherever air can get locked up and blocked the flow of the system. We wanna use those first to get the system flowing. Once we have the system flowing, now we come to our active air elimination, which starts with the air scoop, then basically the roll air troll, and now to modern day, the actual air eliminator. Okay, the air eliminator, does a great job, it's always working, it's always active. As long as that vent cap is open, that vent is clean, that thing will be working, getting all those bubbles out of your system, which as we discussed before, air is the enemy of the hydronic system, we want it out. So let's get it out, let's do it right. Air limiters are more money, so think about it, look at your system. It might be a better idea to have an air vent, air eliminator on every boiler actively seeing all that water go through that boiler and having one big one on the main. So think about it, be smart about it, but make sure you have air illumination system on every hydronic system if you want a quiet system.